Nick York is outside the Lala Stadium, West Ham Fan TV, Friday night, so we're here with a post-match reaction. We will be back with a post-match pint next week, I promise. Um, we're just getting too many games moved, mate. Two-man team tonight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Lazy. Where's Scott? <laughs> Dan's holding the camera. Sorry, da, yeah, da, yeah. Sorry, Dan's out. Graham still don't know what's going on. Dan's holding the camera. Let the bowl in. <laughs> Bless him. He's still thinking about when we're starting the channel. Um, uh, yeah, two-man team tonight. We will be back with post-match pint next week. Um, what do you reckon of the performance tonight? Well, there's a. I've just done a fan count. There's a very mixed reaction. I thought. I'll be honest, I thought we played well yeah, and I, I thought we controlled the game pretty well yeah, after I didn't the think first game. I don't think it was as bad as some people were saying, but the first 10 minutes was terrible. We just couldn't get... We was giving balls away. Anderson was giving balls away. No ball. Um, and that a letter I thought was really bad today. Yeah, one thing about the uh, the starting lineup, I thought that was a that was a wrong decision bringing Zabaleta in today. I thought Fredericks would have been perfect for this game against his former club and just because the pace of Fulham down their wings, I think uh, Ryan Fredericks, which it proved in the second half, was a better option because they had that chance right at the end of the second half. And I said to you, didn't I, Zabaleta wouldn't have got there. To so be honest, mate, that's a match-winning tackle because yeah, he was yeah. scoring. He's, he's a good player, Mitrovic. He's, I think I said to you, he's probably one of two players in Fulham that, that is worth anything because I thought they was awful. And um, he was scoring that. He was through on goal. He was opening up his body. And what a challenge that was. Yeah, it's a great, it's, as you said, it's a match-winning tackle. And uh, I like Ryan Fredericks. I, I rate him a lot. And I hope now that he can sort of settle into the team and become a first-team regular because his pace is frightening. Uh, his positioning sometimes is a bit questionable, but that he's not been playing that long. He's been injured, so he's just getting back into the team. But He's still learning as well. Yeah, he's yeah. not played top-flight football. Yeah, start, start of the game as well. I mean, they had that chance after about 30 seconds. We, we, we gifted them the opportunity. Great save by Fabianski. Then they have another chance. And then two minutes later, they're 1-0 up. Ryan Babble gets his first goal. Um, I thought it was Jamie Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. The haircut, same it haircut. Like, yeah, it looks like <laughs> in the same colour as that. But no, nah, it's um, honestly, it, it was a terrible start. But we started getting into the game as the half went on. Um, we equalised. I didn't see it. I was down. I was running up the stairs just as we scored. I'd done what you'd done the other week. But uh, was it uh, some people saying to me it was Ann Ball? I thought he just nodded it in. But I've, I've uh, have you seen it? Yeah, some people. So Scott on uh, the WhatsApp group was saying Ann Ball. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. But look, we need a bit of luck sometimes. And I think once that one goal Mate, went in, up with that one from last week. Mate. Yeah, I think once that goal went in, I, I think Fulham's head uh, sort of dropped a bit, didn't it? And then uh, you could see the second coming, and uh, it was another great header from Diop. Yeah, I mean, what a, what a great header that was. Three three goals tonight, three headers. I thought, uh, to be honest, I thought we, we played well, we controlled the game. We let him come into his second half, which I thought was just energy levels. I think we did, we just needed a bit more energy in there. And when Lanzini come on, mate, I mean, massive return today. What a performance he yeah, put in. Like, do you know what it reminded me of? Do you remember when um, Pyatt come back after his injury and the yeah. bowling just on their feet? And it was just great to see him back on the pitch. And straight away, he didn't look like he'd been out. He was just linking up play. You know, he could have had a couple of goals tonight if he'd have pulled oh, the trigger. To be honest with you, mate... I, I think that's the reason we've been struggling of late. We've had no creativity in there. We've, we've set up very defensively. You look at the way Snodgrass and, and you know, not so much Snodgrass, because he does try and bomb forward as much as he can, but especially with Noble, when he starts to, um, when he passes, well, he waits, you know what I mean? And Rice is the same, he's a defensive player. When Lanzini come on, I think the difference is, you are, you're getting some <laughs> matrix shots on me there. Um, well, the difference is with, with Lanzini is, he passes and he goes. He wants it back. You know what I mean. And you can see, especially with Arnie and that. You know what I mean. There's going to be a nice little link up there. Once, once they get, if they can get Arnie, Anderson, Nasri, and Lanzini and a little diamond, it's going to frighten teams. Um, I mean, players like Antonio, Snodgrass, Noble, Zabaleta. I thought, they're, they're, I've got to say this, Matt. I thought Antonio was excellent yeah, tonight. Antonio well. was great tonight. But Ogbonna as well. Now they've got pressure on them because that bench is strong. And they're ready to come in and take their place. And they need to start stepping up. I thought Noble started off a bit shaky, but I thought he had a quite decent game. I think mean, someone over there said uh, he had a really poor game. I, I didn't, I didn't no, see I that. I thought Snodgrass uh, had an half decent game. Zabaleta, I think he just got caught out a bit too much. But look, we've got the win. We're the third goal, another red eye, Antonio. Deserved the goal tonight. Um, 
But you had an out of it hit the crossbar. This could have been five one here tonight. But then again, it could have been two three nil to them. It was just yeah. one of them games. But lucky enough, I thought it was an entertaining game. Yeah, it was an entertaining game. Uh, as you know, Friday night under the lights. You know, I like I don't mind Friday night games as long as they're not away from home. Yeah. yeah. But um, Watford won tonight, which is a bit of a disappointment because we was trying to chase them down. But no, it's three points. We've got a big week coming up. We've got Man City during the week. It's tough. Anything we get there is a bonus, even if like they don't give us a good idea, and that's a bonus, you know what I mean? It's because you don't want to damage our confidence. Next week against Newcastle is a massive game. Well, I, I just spoke to Dom, I've just come off the, the mic with him. Uh, look, f- within three minutes here, mate, they'd had four chances. If, if that happens Wednesday, we're 4 0 down. Yeah, the thing is, though, we can't fear Man City just because it's Man City, we can't fear them. We've got good enough players to go there and give them a game. We, yeah. Everyone said it about Liverpool as well, and we, we, we give them more than a game, yeah. and that's the thing we we sort of turn up against the big boys but do you know what I'll be honest with you I'm probably not expecting us to get anything up there because City are just on fire at the moment again for the title but as I said next Saturday against Newcastle is a massive game it's a massive day here next Saturday Billy Bonds day you know they're naming the East Stand after him he's here uh, Platt, his family his old teammates it's going to be a massive day so it's going to be an exciting day so as long as we get the win as well it'd be massive yeah absolutely absolutely no not me mate that wasn't me that was my shoe no that was my shoe as it scraped along um uh, in summary mate good performance yeah it was uh, as i said after the first 10 15 minutes uh, I, I sort of relaxed and enjoyed it a bit more and once lanzini come on as well i i, I just it's great to see him back he's a, he's a massive player it's like a brand new signing mm. is do you know what it felt like it felt like a 50 million pound signing a brand new signing just coming on tonight yeah, i'm glad yeah. to see him back he's a i'm surprised to see him back you know the injury was terrible before the world cup and uh it's great to see him back and he's going to be a massive addition to the squad and um yeah if we can get nasri on there as well it's going to be great. Love it. One thing I've got to mention is uh, we was out last night, mate. Out on a school night. Yeah, the James Collins night. Uh, the, um, the West Ham Way event in O'Neill's in Leytonstone. What a night that was. Excellent. Uh, good to see Ginge. You know, it was... Uh, it was, he had some good stories. It was a bit emotional as well, like when he's, uh, his little speech at the end when he said, like, West Ham's his family. He's met his wife through West Ham. He's, he's obviously got the kids. Um, he loves the club. He came here as a 21-year-old, you know, from Newport. And uh, he loves the club. And it's, it's, it's clear to see he didn't want to leave, but he had no option. He had no choice, did I want to bring something up quickly before we, we, we wrap this up, right? I didn't realise this until we, um, we was at the event last night. He's been at this club through a lot of massive games. He was here for the last game of bowling. He was here for the cup final, uh, the last game against Leicester when his contract was up. And he didn't play in all three of them games. He never played at the bowling, the last game of bowling. He never played in the cup final and he never got on against Leicester. Testimonial, surely. Testimonial. This is the season to do it. Yeah, it'd be nice, but I think that's gone now, mate. I don't think that's ever going to happen. The only thing that could happen is if the fans done something for him. Yeah. If the fans got a venue, you know, invited him over, a few of his former teammates, uh, you know, that's the only way. I think Ginger would love that. I think he loved it last night of his Guinness. But one thing I will say is... Uh, he wasn't drinking, Ipswich. He wasn't drinking, uh, I yeah, promise. It, no, it was, uh, it was Coke. Uh, but no, nah, it was... Uh, no, he's injured anyway. He, he's not playing tomorrow. Yeah. So he can have a couple of Guinnesses. It's Ginger Pelle. He can do what he wants. Yeah, he what he wants. But no, nah, just like... The event was great. I mean, X and Dave and the, all the boys at West Ham Way, you know, they put on a great event and they've got some massive people coming up. They've got Ludo coming up next Saturday. And they've got Teddy Sheringham coming up. It's a great event. So I'd recommend it to everyone. Free booze, 30 quid, all in, you know, legends, everything. It's, it's, and I thought the venue was great as well. Yeah. Well, we know that venue very well. Yeah, we, as we was walking down to O'Neill's, we was like... Re- so, yeah, reminiscing about where we used to be sick and leaning up against the fence and crop. yeah when you were there mate you had a nice black shirt yeah, in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um no, it was a great event uh well done ginger pele let's get a testimonial let's sort it out let's try and drive that it will be tough but i want him to pull that claret and blue shirt on one more time what we do is we'll take him over for like power league or something which we'll come play with the ironworks yeah we'll have a little kick about over power league but no look, he's he was a great servant for west ham as i said he loves the club we love ginger pele brilliant thank you very much for joining us on this edition of west ham fan tv's uh, post-match reaction go and follow us on facebook.com forward slash west ham fan tv twitter.com forward slash west ham fan tv and all the stuff we do use now yeah, instagram let's see instagram. i've instagram i've involved in instagram now and me and dan have been posting you've been posting as well um so yeah we're going to be using it a lot more um yeah, so keep an eye we, out. We, we want to try and have a little bit of a, a refresh of the channel. 
Um, we've got some good ideas for next season and we're going to put them into place. But as for the rest of this season, we want to try and start to sort of build it a little bit more. I know, watch the screen. You, you, you're putting it down. Hey! Um, Okay, good, nice one. Um, yeah, we, we, we want to try, try and sort of post more on our social media, make it more about the football. I think over the last few weeks, obviously, a couple of things have happened and we, we, you know, we've got lost a little bit in you know, opinions and all that, but we, we want to draw a line underneath all that now and we want to concentrate solely on what we're here to do in that's West Ham. Yeah, next week on Instagram as well, we're going to do some behind-the-scenes stuff from post-match plans, the things you don't see, the funny bits. Yeah. The things that go on behind are probably funnier than the show. <laughs> like, you remember the old fire extinguisher stuff? And now we've had, We have always have a laugh off camera, so we might as well start putting it on camera and uh, yeah, showing people that, uh, what we're here to do, entertain people and uh, bring some good content. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us. One thing left to say, Wayne. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. <laughs>